Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of News in Motion. Uh, today is March the 12th, 2024, and it is also that's happening Tuesday. Um, before we get started with today's show, let us know how your weekend was and how your Monday was yesterday. Um, you know, whether you just relaxed, whether you did something eventful, hang, hung out with a couple of family members and friends, uh, let us know what you did in the chat um, over this past weekend and on yesterday. Um, if this is your first time tuning in to News in Motion, we just want to say thank you for joining us. News in Motion is a news media outlet with relevant commentary and call to action news, especially with the election coming up. It is important that we emphasize the importance of voter registration. So if you have any young people who are of, of, of the age to vote, please encourage them to go out and register to vote so that way their, vo- their voice and their vote can make a difference um, in the world. I see you, Miss Marion Jackson. I see you, Miss A, uh, Miss Ardenia. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Miss Deborah Johnson. She says she did some spring cleaning over the weekend. Uh, good morning, Miss Adrian. Uh, Heather Crabtree. Good morning to you, Pastor Alex Williams. T- tuning in, everyone th- tuning in through YouTube. Good morning to you, Miss Donita. Good morning to you as well. Uh, good morning, Mr. Nicholson. How are you doing, sir? Tuning in through YouTube. Uh, we can also be found on LinkedIn and any audio, audio or podcast platforms. So if you're ready for that's happening Tuesday, grab a paper, grab a friend, grab a pen, and we'll be right back after this brief intro. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's good to see some new names pop up. Good morning, Ulysses Nicholson. Good morning. This uh, so glad to see you on here. What's up, Latrice Jones? What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, if you are in Georgia, if you are in Georgia, your primaries are today. So uh, everyone in Georgia, get out there and um, go to your primaries. I'm trying to see who else. Mississippi, yours um, are today as well. And I think there's one more. I think there's a Hawaii caucus today. And then Washington, state of Washington, your elections, your primaries are today. So make sure y'all get up and get out and vote. Don't stay in. Don't stay in. You probably have some other... Uh, measures on the ballot. So make sure you read up on that. You can go to ballotpedia.org and get all the latest information. You can even print out a sample ballot before you go. Um, I see you, Regina. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all, today is That's Happening Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, March 12th, 2024, and we have a lot of news. So anything important y'all want to share before we get started? I know y'all can use that chat feature chat away, put uh, post questions up there, post comments, statements, whatever. Everyone on our audio podcast, we want to say good morning to you as well. Yes, Latrice Jones, get out and vote. Next week, March 19th, I know we have Ohio. Um, Let me see. I think that's the only one. I think that's the only one next week. Nope, we have Kansas next week and Illinois. uh, Illinois next week and Florida. So, so, and Arizona. So there are a few, we'll talk about that again later on this week, but we want to make sure. And if you have early voting and you want to utilize that, do that as well. All right, y'all, let me give you, let me start with some rapid fire, if y'all don't mind. The 96th Academy Award uh, pull in, they pulled in uh, 19.5 million TV viewers, y'all, the most since 2020. And it's an increase of 4% from last year. In 2020, the Oscars drew 23.64 million viewers, and that comes from the Hollywood Reporter. Now, I'm sure Kenny's going to share all this on Saturday with uh, Game Over, but today, quarterback Kirk Cousins signed four-year 
$180 million deal with the Atlanta Falcons after six years with the Minnesota Vikings. That's coming out of the USA Today. All right, y'all, this dude just won't quit. Y'all know I talked about him last week. I don't get it. He will not quit. After his embarrassment last week of having his emails um, with the truth plastered all over social media, TechCrunch is reporting that Elon Musk says that his artificial intelligence startup, XAI, I don't know what what's his fascination with X, but XAI will make his chat box open source beginning this week. And he's going to, uh, this move will make all of his uh, source code available to the public. Now, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. Y'all, nature.com, that's a new fave of mine when I'm looking at the different alerts and reports that's coming in. And don't just go jump on this. And I would love to have a town hall about this soon. But before then, y'all, this new drug, y'all know, y'all know what it is, Ozempic and Wegovy, uh, has shown now success in treating side effects of HIV drugs, including fatty liver buildup. So it's doing a lot. So the question is, how long are they going to leave it out here on the market since it's really working for everything, everybody, and anything? Uh, the article states that people with HIV are the latest group to benefit from this new generation of anti-obesity drugs. Um, and they say if the early data about treatments affects are confirmed, the drug could become a key controlling uh, metabolic problem that often caused by anti-HIV medication. So that's happening as well, y'all. Now, because I was into reading all these medical alerts this past weekend, this one just absolutely grossed me out. And I decided since it grossed me out, I'm about to gross y'all out on this Tuesday morning. Y'all listen. This is psych.org, all right? Uh, they report that Georgia Tech, I want, don't, t- don't tell me out, y'all. I want y'all to listen. That Georgia Tech researchers have wanted to understand cicadas, okay? And y'all know they're coming back. They're coming back this year, and I hate those things. But Georgia Tech didn't want to just understand cicadas. They wanted to understand their urination. <laughs> yes, y'all, yes, yes, yes. So you heard me, yes. So I'm about to gross y'all out. Now, I'll spare you the details. I'll spare you the details. But the bottom line, they pee a lot mm -hmm, in the trees. So the next time you go grab an apple off a tree, you got to ask yourself, what's on this apple? And what do I need to do to wash it? Y'all, they also urinate a lot in the same streams as mammals. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, They're finding that disapproved prevailing theory on how sap-eating insects uh, excrete. Yeah. So now you know. And the next time you want to have some lettuce or you want to have some greens, some collard greens, some mustard greens, some tomatoes, uh, whatever that's grown out from the ground up, and then whatever you're picking off of a tree, even if you're pulling a leaf, you got to ask yourself what residue is left on your hands. There, I said it. Uh, yeah, this is that's happening Tuesday, okay? Y'all, Kate manipulated Kate, Kate, the Princess of Wales. Yeah, she manipulated some family pictures of her and her children. So AP killed the photo. Y'all just want to say now, if Megan would have done something like that, y'all know, never mind. All right, y'all, let's get into some of the politics today. I just wanted to give y'all that rapid fire real quick, and now I want to get into some of the politics. Now, Special Counsel Robert Hurd to testify before Congress today uh, on investigation of President Joe Biden handling of classified documents. Um, Now, this comes after her decline to um to give charges last week but last month excuse me but he is going to be testifying and there are people who are very concerned about the testimony because he's going to try to talk about president biden's state of mind but he's not a physician so he has no idea and if you saw what i saw last thursday you know i had nothing wrong with him he, he told y'all at the end, he said, I'm old. He said, first I was young, now I'm old. Ain't that right, Lindsey Graham? And they had a good chuckle behind it. I see you, Kim Carter. Good morning. So y'all, the U.S. Urban Development Secretary, uh, Marcia Fudge, she is resigning. 
Yeah, USA Today reports, as well as uh, a statement straight from the White House. Um, she is a former representative representative of, of Ohio. She told Time Magazine, it's just time to go home. She said, there's no scandal. There's nothing going on. I'm not mad. There's none of that stuff going on. She said, I, I'm just ready to become a regular citizen. Y'all, this, this type of work, you cannot stay in it and be effective for life, okay? So when you look at even the makeup of the Senate and the makeup of the House, you understand why we're now saying y'all need to cycle out of here train up some people and go so she says don't ever look for her to be on another ballot she said "Mm -mm, she ain't doing that ever again um she says she's had a great time she thinks that a, a hud is not a red or a blue um issue she said it's everybody knows that this issue can really hit everybody and I, I just loved her interview and then to read it as well was just amazing all right, y'all, Senator Bob Menendez, uh, he's still not resigning from the Senate. It's the craziest thing. But he pleads not guilty, y'all, to new obstruction bribery charges um, and superseding indictment. So he's another one. He's like, hey, listen, if I, good morning, Kim Edmondson. Uh, Bob Men- Menendez is saying if he's not leaving, then I'm not leaving either. So that's just what it is. I guess we're just going to have a house, a house, a ministry, just everything, just a scandal. Who knows? Y'all, former President Donald Trump's advisor, Peter Navarro, ordered to report to Miami prison March the 19th to serve four month sentence on contempt charges. So that's happening. What's up, Stephanie Burbridge, y'all? All right, y'all. So y'all know, I don't know what y'all watched on last Thursday, but I watched it and I was like, this is just amazing. Now use these talking points to get through everything, which we're gonna cover tomorrow every talking point but i want to just share this with y'all because i think this is just this is just all the way deep of the connection so as soon as um he was done with this state of the union and i don't know what that rebuttal was all about i i think snl did a great job uh with that on saturday night live but um I still don't know what that was about. And plus, y'all, she lied. That was an issue that happened in Mexico 20 years ago. And the woman interviewed, uh, the woman in Mexico interviewed and said, you know, she should have asked me. I would have told her. And, you know, she said that that wasn't her story to tell. But that happened 20 years ago under a Bush administration. Um, So that was just filled with lies. But I don't know what that was. Creepy, crawly. I still don't know. But y'all, after that amazing State of the Union, amazing, I just want y'all to know, when he mentioned the growth is is empowering the economy, and he talked about health care cuts, costs, and he talked about tax credits for home ownership, and he talked about some other things, y'all. Y'all, this is how, and we've been telling y'all about this, this is how the financial in the financial institution, whatever you want to call it, then the government and the public all work together. Y'all, the boards was nothing but green on Friday. Nothing but green on Friday. I'm like, this really dictates. So this morning at 8.30, the CPI, um, uh, the whole inflation index report is going to come out at 8.30, and it will dictate if the boards are going to be red or green. The question is, why is that? Why is that? Kim Edmondson said the speech was awesome. It really was. But I wanted to make that connection again. We're going to go through all the points on tomorrow. All right, just let me get to the other guy. Yeah, let me get to the other guy. And I really would love for you all to have a conversation with me this morning. So let's start off with the firing of everybody yesterday in the RNC. Yeah, the firing took place yesterday, and it's just buck wild crazy. So the firing took place yesterday. Um, it's crazy. And they got rid of 60 positions. They call, they call it a bloodbath. They said this is a bloodbath. But the problem is, it's his family that took over the RNC with Laura Trump. Should that be? And why is the RNC moving aside to allow this to happen? They got rid of 60 people. So some of those people were probably people who supported DeSantis, who supported um, uh, the former governor, I can't think of his name, from New Jersey, Chris Christie, uh, Nikki Haley. 
it, it had a lot to do with a lot of that. So we got to be mindful of, okay, what's really happening here? And should this happen this way? So they fired about 60 people. Communications and political staff members were fired from the party central committee. And it was replaced with their, with their, uh, with his friends and family. Let's just be honest. Um, according to three people familiar with the firings, um, but they weren't authorized to speak publicly because they were told if you speak, you're going to get uh, fired. The staffing changes came just days after Michael Watley and Laura, Laura Trump um, were elected head of the RNC. Yeah, that, that, this is happening, y'all. Um, so they went through and they terminated. They have all of these rules and regulations of what they can and cannot say and how they need to just go ahead and start putting his name and everything. So y'all, y'all remember, y'all heard it here, I think first. Um, back last year in 2023, I talked about Project 2025 and I'm working on getting somebody to come on here to break it down because I, I, I read through the 800 page document, but I don't. I cannot say I understand it all. So I need somebody here who understands it, who can talk about it. But y'all, it's a playbook for uh, if he gets into office, comes January 20, 2025, this playbook will be adopted by both the House and the Senate, and they will control everything. He wants the FBI to report to him. He wants, and I did read those pages. He wants the FBI to report to him. He wants the DOJ to support and report to his agenda. He wants the Pentagon to support and a report to him and his agenda. All of his people are going to be in play. Y'all better pay attention to what's going on. And if you can get it, and you, it's out there. Um, if you can get your hands on the document, make sure it is verified because AI have some manipulation project 2025 out there. That's far worse, believe it or not, than what the real document uh, is showing. But y'all have to pay attention to what's going on. They literally are going to change the whole government structure if he gets back in office. Pay attention. Now, this should also concern you. On Monday morning, um, former President Donald Trump said in an interview that he considers Facebook to be the enemy of the people. And of course, I checked out the numbers on the meta platform in the stock market. They dropped like 4% like within seconds. That's how much control this has. So people were like, oh, all, these, all you young people, all you millennials, all you people that's riding the coattail, buying the gold tennis shoes that are absolutely ugly, um, just all of that. Y'all are like, well, Joe Biden wants to uh, sign an executive order to ban TikTok. Well, let's go back to some truth. And listen, reading is fundamental. Really, take some time to research before you jump on the bandwagon of something. When he was in office, uh-huh, I'm talking Donald J. Trump, so you're not confusing if you don't know what I mean by Buttercup or the former guy, former President Donald J. Trump signed an executive order when he was in office to get rid of TikTok, uh-huh. See, when y'all read and understand and connect the dots, it can help. So he signs a, a, an executive order that will ban. Now, he signed this on August the 6th, 2020. He must have a number with six or something. But on August the 6th, 2020, he signed an executive order to ban TikTok. The reason why it wasn't banned? Because the U.S. judge, he halted the ban just hours before it was set to start. And so it was halted on September the 27th, 2020. Yeah, that's why y'all tune in the news in motion because we're going to read everything. Because when I heard, I said, well, wait a minute, hold up. I went digging, found it. I said, oh, exec executive order. And again, because he didn't keep any records, I couldn't find the actual executive order. But I found all the news articles that talked about him signing it. Uh-huh. So he signed that on August the 6th, 2020 to ban it. And then all of a sudden, what's the turnaround? Somebody say, what's the turnaround? I see you, Dr. Antoinette. What was the turnaround? Well, let's see. Mar Largo and the guy who funds TikTok 
came and hung out with him this past weekend. And he said, oh, I need his money. So let me see what I'm going to deal. How am I going to shuffle this around so I can get his money? So now I'm going to talk about we need TikTok and keep all the young people on TikTok. Y'all better follow and connect the dots. So let me go there. Uh, his name is uh, Jeff Yass, Y-A-S-S, -S, uh, who is a billionaire investor, and it's called Bite Dance. So some people may say, well, that's not TikTok. Well, y'all need to know who owns TikTok. Bike Dance owns TikTok. So he's a billionaire. He owns, he has the majority stake into TikTok. He went and met up with Donald J. Trump at Mar-a-Lago on this past weekend, wanting some money. So now there was a deal made. Y'all need to pay attention. Y'all need to pay attention. Pay attention. So now all of a sudden he's like, yeah, let's have TikTok. What? You got your cronies in the Congress saying, don't, uh, uh, let's ban it, let's get rid of it. So now you got Speaker Mike Johnson doing the shuffle dance, backtracking, trying to say, oh yeah, we need TikTok, so we're not going to sign this. This is dead on arrival. Dude, make up your mind. Make up, You wanted to clap, you wanted to stand last Thursday with your smirk on your face. You couldn't even go after Marjorie Taylor Greene because you knew she was going to unseat you within uh, 24 hours. And she's not. There is a law. You're not supposed to be on the floor with paraphernalia. No, there's a law. So she did get fined. She did. Now, if she paid it or not, I have no idea. But she did get fined. So he makes that U-turn. But now, here's his best friend. Oh, he probably doesn't have any best friend. Steve Bannon. Y'all better read this. This is like, you don't need to watch television with this kind of news, okay? Steve Bannon, Bannon who's uh, who's out on bond for a moment, because, uh, you know, he was in prison. He's out on bond for a moment um, with this whole thing, you know, of, of, of an appeal. He comes out and he says on Saturday, the former president was paid off after a shift in the stance of TikTok. So his own person, his own buddy came out and said, y'all, he got paid off. So is that what you want in the office? We would be for sale. We would be for sale. The country would be for sale. So let me just keep digging into his money since we can, right? So I thought it was very shocking that he paid $91 million, uh bond while he's appealing the E. Jean Carroll uh, judgment. I thought, where did he get 91 million? Uh, million dollars from. Well, he, they won't, no one will reveal this, but I am like looking forward. I'm searching forward. I'm calling people, everything, trying to get this. And it's like airtight. There was a company that helped him put up the $91 million bond. So I want y'all to go back to something. So I kind of like went back to see if it was this person, this family. There's a family I, I share with y'all. It was on a GoFundMe. So it was public. It was not a secret. Um, this, these billionaires who started a GoFundMe. Y'all remember me talking about that here? And I thought that was hilarious. Like, if you billionaires, why can't you just give him the money? Why are y'all going to grift people for money if you really want him to have this money? So I just sort of wondered, did they put that money up? Or did they didn't raise that much on, tick, on, um, on uh, GoFundMe. So I'm like, where did this money come from? But here's what I want to say. And I know no one on here is listening to this, a part of his group. Who knows? They may be secretly watching. But listen, he's taking your money, your hard-earned money. He is. Why would you just freely give this? I'm trying to understand why you would just freely give this. So y'all, there was a company that put up $91 million. And y'all know Black Twitter, because they still call themselves Black Twitter. Black Twitter is trying to find out. So we all know not to shop those places. The thing is, y'all, we have to follow suit. At some point, we have to make a stand and say, I'm not, I'm no longer going to support this. Now, everybody hold your breath. Everybody hold your breath. Everybody hold your breath. Ah, oh, I can't believe this. And I saw it in the, in the White House briefings that I was going through on yesterday. After today, um, he, you know, now he has his people in place with the RNC. There'll be an announcement sometime, I would say this week, maybe even as early as tomorrow, maybe even early as the polls close today, that says that he will be the presumptive nominee. The moment, so he doesn't even have to wait till their July conference, and it is in July. They don't have to wait for the convention, excuse me, in July. 
he can they can come out and say that immediately because there's nobody else running against him at this point everybody pulled out as early as later today at the end of uh election tallies today or tomorrow or anytime this week the moment they name him the presumptive nominee are y'all ready for this he will begin receiving intel of the united states of america we should be very concerned y'all remember those boxes that were stacked up on the on the stage at mar largo the boxes he stole the boxes the archives that he's currently uh, he was what, in one of the indictments for that. Why, why would somebody with indictments for that receive intel of the United States of America? Yeah, he's going to be receiving intel. He will be, we can, it's, it's a part of the law. He will be able to receive intel of the United States of America. We should be very concerned. Now, intel agencies, Intel agencies, and Politico brought this out, Intel agencies, uh, they say that they fear, their word was fear, uh, that he could spill secrets. Now, remember, he had the Turkish prime minister at mar Largo. was that last week? So then he had the uh, uh, Bite Dance, who's the major funder of TikTok at mar Largo this weekend. All of a sudden, he did a backtrack there. What is happening here? We should be very concerned. So the U.S. intelligence office officials are planning to brief him on national security measures the moment they name him the presumptive nominee. Now, remember, the previous RNC chair, Rachel, she wasn't doing it. She, they were trying to force her to do it after the Iowa caucus. And she said, no, that's why she got kicked out, right? So then he stacked it with his people. There should be a disconnect with hiring your people to take that type of position. Adrian says, and sells it to Putin to continue to bankroll him. Yeah. Yes, Stephanie Hall, this is so serious. This is, this is not to intimidate or to scare or to threaten or any of that. This is real. This is real. This, ladies and gentlemen, is real. Is real. So I'm going to end with that before I go to the inspirational message, but I want I would love to hear some of y'all's feedback on that because a whole lot is unfolding rather quickly. And the fact that he's posting these bonds when he didn't have any money to be able to post a bond. Now he still has 435 uh, million to go, um, but they believe he'll have that. I um, mean, he needs to have that, I believe, by this coming Friday um, or next Friday. Um, they believe he'll have that before then. Uh, Dr. Antoinette said he won't read them. Remember, he said previously he didn't read the, the memos. But I hear you, sis. Everything may be for sale, especially to pay his legal fees. And Adrian says Hillary was right. Yeah, we have to pay attention. We have to pay attention to what is going on. Seriously, y'all, our vote. Our votes matter. Now, let me, I want to speak to those um, for a moment who are uncommitted. I get, I get it. I understand. I get it. But as you are uncommitted, you have to ask yourself, what's going to be the result? And can you live with that result? Now, I'm not saying vote for somebody you don't want to vote for. I'm not suggesting that at all. But I think we have to start uh thinking through and processing what can really happen. So I'm going to say this, and I'll probably get some hate mail about this, but that's okay. I've gotten it before. And that is all these protests where there's town hall meetings and everybody's standing up, shouting, screaming for a ceasefire. Yes, we all want a ceasefire. But when you stand up and scream out, allow the person to respond. We're not getting anywhere. So what's happening is... Uh, uh, representatives and senators are starting to cancel town hall meetings. And so now we can't hear what's going on. We have to find another way. Protest, march, I get it. But as you're standing up, disrupting and interrupting for good reason, I get it. I get it. I get it. Allow the person to respond. If you're just going to yell and shout for 20, 30 minutes, Nothing is going to be resolved. We can't even hear you and you can't even hear 
what could be coming back as a response. And yes, I get it. You don't like the responses that are out there. I am. I, I, I can stand with you, but I at least want to encourage us to listen to what's being said so that we can make an educated response to respond. So y'all, that's, that's what's happening out here. This is going to get heated up. I want y'all to be mindful. And with all that's going on, we had more alerts this weekend. Every news source was getting them. I'm sure you've already started seeing them or hearing them or reading about them. And that is this. More and more older people are stepping away from being election officials, election poll workers. So they are in dire need of election poll workers. Not necessarily for the primaries, because those are pretty much coming to a close in the next month and a half, two months uh, max. But for November the 5th, they're in dire need. They're begging people. Uh, in some states, they're even they're even increasing the stipend because they're trying to attract people to come. Latrice Jones says, "Can you pop that one up, Isaiah? Those folk, those kind of folks, uh, need to be put out of town hall. Better yet, schedule a meeting or send an email." I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, you know, so many people were wondering why, because uh, you know, state of the union always starts on time. That. That that sergeant of arms announced that person at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the nose every state of the union. Y'all, you know, it was late. It was like, what, 9, 15, 9, 20? And that was because all the protesters, I'm like, y'all messing with, y'all messing with people who can take y'all down. Y'all messing with Secret Service, CIA, uh, police. Y'all are messing with some. So they had to like reroute to get to where they were going to get him into the Capitol because of protests. And it's like, we see you and yes, keep protesting, but make sure you're taking time to hear what's being said. I, I felt for the guy in the, in the galley. I'm like, dude, you were bold. And I saw secret service come get you pretty quickly. Is it worth it? And I'm sure many people say yes. But do you want to be marked as no fly and, and no this and no that and possible possibly find and all of that? A lot of tensions are rising and I want us to be armed with conversations to have with other people. So again, tune in tomorrow. We can get to that. So my inspirational message. Oh, by the way, yes, it took longer. If you saw my e-newsletter. I put in there that I wanted to sign a personal note to each person. And I wasn't sending books out five here, five there. So they all are there now all in the mail. I was at the post office for almost three hours on Saturday. I was. Yeah, it was a long time. And I had to get out of line and get back in line because I had a lot of books. Um, and they sent media mail. And media mail takes a little while. Why did I send them media mail? If y'all know, I gave y'all a flat rate. Five dollars to ship it. Uh, media mail, because of the thickness of the book and the heaviness of the book, cost ten dollars and eleven cents a book. So yeah, I mean, I yeah, my my husband had to. Uh, <laughs> he's my investor for this book, so so he paid that difference to get all these books. Shipped. But it's media mail, so it's gonna take a minute. Even if you're in town, it's gonna take a minute. But um, the books are in the mail. So media mail. So if you know regular mail takes about three or four days, media mail is going to take a little bit longer. Take that times two, maybe even three, but you'll get them. You'll get them. I'm still not putting it on air on Amazon yet until you all, till I start seeing that you all have the book. When you get your book, if you would just take a selfie or take a picture, make a comment and post it, that would be great. Then that will let me know that you're getting them. And then I will then put it up on Amazon. So thank y'all so much for your patience. I appreciate it, but that was a lot. All right, inspirational message. All I have is this, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Latrice Jones says, can't wait to get my book. I'm so excited. I'm going to I'm, I'm bust, bust you, Latrice. I'm at a funeral minding my own business yesterday. Sitting next to Latrice Jones, she says, where's my book? I said, what you do? Pull it out at the daggone funeral. We were always joking. That's how me and Latrice roll. Yeah, we always cutting that we were cutting up at a funeral. Yes, we were. So we had a good time. Then we had some other conversations too. But anyway, I just wanted to bust you out. Latrice. She was like, she's like, she's like leaned over. Where's my book? Girl, it's in the mail. So I told her the whole story about being in the post office and all that that's happening too. 
But um, people at the post, they were looking at me, but don't worry, because I sold some books in the post office too. Some man said, what is that? And I said, oh, it's my book. Well, what kind of book is it? So I told him, he said, well, can I get one? I said, well, look for it on Amazon. He said, well, can I just pay you now? I said, yeah, but you're going to have to give me your address. I'm going to ship it when the next shipment comes in to me. So I did. I sold a book in the book in the um in the uh, post office. Yes, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Why am I sharing that this morning? Y'all, if there's ever been a need or time for prayer, the time is now. Yes, the time was back during the pandemic, but the time is also now in this election season, this election cycle. I think um, Marcia Fudge said it best. It's just time for her to go home, be a regular citizen. I had to ask myself this question. And y'all know I said, I'm going to just keep powering through. I'm going to just keep powering through um, without taking long breaks um, in the spring. Normally, I was slated to take the whole month of April off. Y'all know that, right? I decided not to. I am going to take a week off, though, but I decided not to. But y'all, now that this election cycle has heated up and I started seeing all of these alerts, I said, ooh, I might have made a mistake saying I'm going to power through all the way through uh, through June. Because y'all know July is the young people take over in August. I am taking off so I can really gear up, gear up for September, October, and November. And as always, I'm, I'm warning y'all now. I'm warning y'all now. I have promised. I have made the commitment to see news in motion through the election. Through the election. It will determine... What may happen after the election, how much longer I'll stay around. I love what I'm doing. I'm absolutely loving it. But this news, and especially if we have somebody in office that is just where they'll be implementing Project 2025, I'll tell you now, I won't be able to handle it. I will not be able to handle it. Not at all. Um, And I'm saying I would mentally, I would not be able to handle it. So y'all, the time is now to pray. We must pray. So I kind of like got off the track um, two weeks ago, so I'm going to get back on the track. So today, if we can pray for election officials, that they will have patience, even now, and that and that that the right people will come forward to be election officials, election poll workers, that the right people will have the right mindset, that they will have the right disposition, that they will use wisdom, that they will have patience, that they would um, be nonpartisan when it comes to the job that they are fulfilling, that they would um, take care of themselves and that they would be healthy and they would eat right and they will also be people of prayer so that they're bringing prayer into that atmosphere in which they serve. So I want to get back to that. Again, my apologies, I got off track with that, but that's who I want us to pray for. So tomorrow I'll give us another list of people. It might be the same people. We may need to give, we may need to bathe them in prayer for several days, but that is what I want us to do. Um, Marion Jackson says, (laughs) Crystal says, be patient, Latrice. Thank you, Crystal. Marion Jackson put up the inspirational message. Uh, James 5, 6, Thank you for grabbing that. Kim Edmondson says, amen. Shirley Nicholson says, James 5, 6, things are faith. Latrice Jones says, pray for election officials. Uh, Mary Jackson says, prayer for election, election officials. Hello, Heather. And she says, amen. All right, y'all, that's all I have for today. This has been your host, Gail in, De- Gail in Dudley. Woo, Gail Dudley. I want to say Gail E. Dudley. Gail Dudley, this has been News in Motion. Y'all know what I say, everyone. Stay well and remember, Make some bold moves. We're out. Motion, motion, motion.